Now, now you got lying when I talk. Yeah. Okay. 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 <laughs> I'd like to say good evening to everyone. My name is Peggy Trevison, and I will be your moderator for this evening's lecture. I'd like to welcome you all to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church. Neither are we affiliated with any religious organizations. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization that is dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh or Elohim and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in 1958. Since that time, we have established branch schools across the United States, Canada, and other foreign countries. The Syracuse branch was established in 1969. At this time, I'd like to recognize the presence of the Dean of Syracuse branch, Dr. Patrick Trevison, our president, Dr. Robert Welch, and our vice president, Dr. John Committee. Now, in this school and throughout the lecture this evening, we'll be using the true, correct, and original name and title for the Father, the Word, or Son, and the Holy Spirit which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. This has been improperly substituted in most Bibles with the title Lord. For the word or son, we use the divine title Elohim. This has been improperly substituted in most Bibles with the title God. And the name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. This has been improperly substituted with Jesus or Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. And we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title, which means that Elohim is the title that your Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it's an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part into encyclopedia or dictionary would prove that neither the Hebrew, Greek, nor Latin language contain any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by the letter J. Neither was there a J in the English language until some 1400 years after the death of the Messiah. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible and untrue renderings of the true name of the Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Now Yahweh, our Heavenly Father, is pure spirit. His pure spirit state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He really chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. If you take a look at this chart, you'll see that we have the cloud painted all the way around the edges of the chart so that everything on the chart abides within the cloud in like manner. Everything in the universe abides within this pure spirit state of Yahweh. And Yahweh, knowing that man cannot perceive of him in this pure spirit state, takes on shape and takes on form right within himself as Yahweh Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being. That is, having shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This visionary shape and form can only be seen by divine vision and only understood by divine revelation. Later on, the self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body, walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, and the world has come to know erroneously as Jesus or Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? You can get a better understanding of this name and title by reading a preface to a Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. We call it a divine pattern because this is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt and into the wilderness of Sinai, he then called Moses on top of Mount Sinai and revealed this tabernacle pattern to him in a vision. Moses was instructed to return to the wilderness of Sinai and build one exactly as he had seen in the mount. This tabernacle pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments making up the one tabernacle pattern. And in this school, we show proof how that everything is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Now, in this school, we have 10 primary constitutional aims or objectives, and they are as follows. 
First is to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained that there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the newer state. Our watch for this peace and our slogan is speak the truth. I'd like to have this evening's meeting dedicated with a prayer by our president, Dr. Robert Welch. That will be followed by a scripture reading, which is Matthew 25, 14 through 29. Our scripture readers this evening are Dr. Deb Kometty and Dr. Scott Miller. And that will be followed by hospitality announcements by myself. Evening. We'll take a moment to acknowledge our Heavenly Father. We come before you in humility, Yahshua. We ask you to keep us strong at the end of the age. Give us the wisdom we need to persevere in the world and with one another, that we may express your great salvation in our every waking day. Thank you for your great pattern, your purpose, your fair purpose that we've become a part of. And keep us in your great faith, for we know that you can manifest and, and do all things as you said you would. In Yahshua's name, may we all say hallelujah. I'll be reading the scripture from a Schofield Reference Bible, inserting the true and correct names. Matthew 25 and 14. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made another five talents. And likewise he that had received two, he also gained another two. But he that had received one went and dug in the earth and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought another five talents, saying, Master, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His master said unto him, Well done. Thou good and faithful servant, thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy master. He also that had received two talents came and said, Master, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His master said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy master. Then he that had received the one talent came and said, Master, I knew thee, that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not spread. 
And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast there thou hast what is thine. His master answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I soweth not, and gathereth where I had not spread. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my, com at my coming I should have received mine own with interest. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him who hath ten talents. For every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. That's Matthew twenty-five fourteen through 29. I want to thank everyone for coming this evening. Appreciate you being in attendance, and hopefully you can just relax and learn something and put your mind in a good place instead of wherever it was before you got here. Mm -hmm. So uh, for our first speaker this evening, we'll hear from Dr. Dan Shepard. Hello. This is, there is a purpose. And that purpose is the glorification of Yahweh through the saving of souls. It's not Dr. Kinley's purpose. It's not Dr. Harris's purpose. It's not Pope whoever's Pope this week. <laughs> Pope Francis? Pope Frank, right? Francis, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. The Pope, who they predicted would be Pope because the Catholic Church is getting its butt kicked in the Western Hemisphere. Mm. But it's not Rick's purpose. It's Yahweh's purpose. Mm -hmm. And all these things that we've been given are for the glory of Yahweh. When I, I'm going to repeat this again. I've said it before, but some people are so single-minded, they think he can define terms for other people. When I say Yahweh, I'm talking about the whole Godhead. Yahweh pure spirit, Yahweh Elohim, and the Holy Spirit, in this case represented by Yahshua, by the end of physical body, Yahshua. Okay? But I'm talking about the whole Godhead. Because it takes, it's just, as we've talked about before, one spirit, three basic manifestations. And it's all working towards that purpose. And the things <laughs> we've been given are for his glory. And as we've seen, both in and out of uh, the school, that's now not how it is for a lot of people. Right? Uh, can I have 1 Thessalonians 5.23? Okay, we're spirit, soul, and body. Can I have 1 Corinthians 6.19, please? We're spirit, soul, and body, but it isn't our spirit, our soul, or our body. 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Whom you have of Elohim, and you are not your own. You have it of Elohim, and you it's not our own. 
Read further, please. For you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify Elohim in your body and in your spirit, which are Elohim's. Right? Your body and your spirit are Elohim. Uh, Ezekiel 18.4, please. And, and, and it's much more than that, because you know that uh, everything is made of spirit. And Yahweh is not going to let any of that out of his control. He's declared the end from the beginning. And he's going to do all his pleasure. Read, please. Ezekiel 18 and 4. Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. All right. And the soul is his. Body, soul, and spirit, they're all his. For his purpose. And not for anybody else's purpose. And he's going to do what he's going to do. Nothing's going to stand in the way of that. Right? The end is declared from the beginning. And it's by grace. And nothing we can do can change the outcome. Now that we got the camera, nobody is being saved now that wasn't being saved before. And it's up to Yahweh to determine for which we use these gifts of our body, soul, and spirit. And talking about these three guys, one guy you know, it's kind of interesting. I haven't checked out the historic etymology of talents in this case. But we know that in this case, the context says it's, it appears it's money. But also, abilities is a talent. Abilities are talents. And whatever gift we have, at least that's amplified in the flesh, we, we know that when, when the Holy Spirit quickens your soul, you get the Holy, Holy Spirit. You don't get pieces, parts. Right? It's a unity. And we have them written up here, the basic uh, attributes. But let's try 1 Corinthians 12 chapter. Not everybody's going to be doing the same thing. I remember one time we were down, down in uh, just outside Elmira. We had this big store we were working at. We had a demolish the store and build, right? So say say we had about two thirds, three quarters demolished, right? So you got store here that's being demolished, being cleaned up. Then you got guys in the middle, they're laying out the new walls, right? And then at the end, you guys that are building. Everybody has all those kind of, not everybody has the same degree of ability or talent, but in this case, the ability to lay out or build is not necessary down here. One store, one purpose, Different pieces. Read, please. First uh, Corinthians twelve and twelve. Or no, you want it up further about the diversities of the yeah. gifts. Yeah. Okay. Um, twelve and one. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man... Now, now, this is Paul talking to the Gentiles? Mm -hmm. As if the Jews weren't carried away under dumb idols? Mm -hmm. But, this is Paul making a point. Read, please. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of Elohim calls Yahshua a curse, and that no man can say that Yahshua is the Savior but by the Holy Spirit. Now these are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Well, let's, let's cl clarify that point there. Uh, no man can call mm -hmm. 
What did it say? No man can say that Yahshua is the Savior, but by the Holy Spirit. Right. Have we heard people call Yahshua the Savior and turn their back on the truth? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, some people, they just hear a sentence and they just have a single-minded way of interpreting it. They think that said Yahshua is the Savior. Must have the Holy Spirit. <laughs> but now I'm not saying any individual person is possessed by a dem demonic spirit, but we know that there have been people that have turned their back on the truth that is manifested through this class. And they used to say Yahshua is the Holy Spirit or the Savior. It's not one incident. It's what's at the end. And there's a lot of things, you know, some people just love to talk about what other people are doing. And their righteousness doesn't measure up to the person doing the talking. So, but that's okay. Because Yahweh Elohim is our judge. And he'll take care of it. You know, it's like at work. You're in a world that doesn't play by the same rules that Yahweh Elohim does. All right? Now, they're supposed to be that way because, as it says in Revelation, the 12th chapter, kicked out of heaven and deceiveth the whole world. 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, he's the God of this world. And if Satan is the God of this world, it's not all going to be rainbows and unicorns. Now, he may let some people think it's rainbows and unicorns in comparison to pick your favorite slaughterhound. You know, it's just, you know, every, so many people just like to kill. And they think it's okay because they say, God told me to do it. And, but that's the way it's supposed to be. Or you got all these preachers, and they're pointing at the people who are doing the killing. Right? Christian preachers, Christians, oh, Muslims evil. Right? I don't think Timothy McVeigh was Muslim. Could be mistaken. I don't want to profile. But, you know, it's a good thing Yahweh Elohim does the defining of the terms, like righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. But it, I was started talking about trying to function in that world, especially at work. It is so comforting to know that Yahweh Elohim's got my back. And, because it, and it's not just the way people are at work. You know, I remember a few years ago uh, when Survivor first started, and it was this big thing, this big thing. And so I decided to check it out, right? Maybe there's something there. And, and I just saw the way they were treating each other. I, said, I can go to work and get paid to watch this stuff. So... But people like that. They like that controversy. You know, all this arguing on these uh, news shows. When I, when I had basic cable, the real basic $8 a month cable, I get the, you know, the local channels and a couple others and headline news, which was fine. But wait a minute, it's not headline news anymore. Anybody know what it is now? Headline news and views, right? And everybody's got their view. Mm -hmm. One thing nice about the radio, you know what I was listening today on the radio? MSNBC, first time I ever had, because I never had cable while it was a station. You know, you got the MSNBC, they're the liberal side, and uh, Fox, they're the conservative side. 
I don't know how Juan Williams does it. If you don't know who Juan Williams was, he used to work for NBR, and he got excused, and now he's over there arguing with all those guys on Fox. But they like the arguing, you know, and uh, I'm, I'm not going to argue. You know. People want to talk, but a lot of people seem to like that stuff. That's why Survivor's so big. But it's nice knowing that through all of it, we've talked about it before, chaos. Inside, it, something that appears to be chaotic, but inside that, there's a pattern. This, to us, is chaotic. Okay? But this is more organized, more real than any of this. Because that's where we started and that's where we're going back. But as it says, no discernible shape and form. So we can't deal with that. We can't deal with, we can't read people's minds. And so if we want to know what people are thinking, they have to say it. But can they 100% reduce what's in here when they talk? It's like one of my favorite sayings is, words are a crucifixion of thought. It just doesn't, I mean, if you're good at expressing what you're feeling, you become a best-selling author. But most people aren't best-selling authors. But, okay, read, please. We're dealing with this idea that not everybody's doing the same thing, but they're all working together. Read, please. 1 Corinthians 12 and 4. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Yahshua. Right. And I emphasize, this can be interpreted dependent on the person's perspective to imply that you only have, that the guy demolishing can only demolish. And the guy laying out can only lay out. Because it's talking about gifts. Mm -hmm. But what's needed will be amplified. A whole Holy Spirit. But not everything is needed from everybody at the same time. Read, please. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same Elohim who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. Right. Uh, read that about the manifestation again. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit. Right. We're given what we're given for to profit, not financially, but for the glory of Yahweh. And as it says here, the manifestation of the Spirit. We don't want to get hung up on the manifestation. But that's what we have to deal with. We even think in manifestations. Are the images in your head from some other universe? Or are they just visions of what's in this universe? Mm -hmm. what we know. It says words are spirit and words are life. Are we going to be speaking English in the next creation? No. The way we communicate is through manifestations. All right? But we don't want to get hung up on it. The world gets hung up on it. There's a lot of Jews and a lot of Muslims that are hung up on the manifestation of Israel. And I guess you could say that about Christians too, because supposedly the Pope wants to get back in there. Has been for a while. But we know... And we're not, we don't have to get it. If people want to read it, it talks about that in Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Jerusalem above, Jerusalem, Jerusalem above, Jerusalem below. Jerusalem below is physical Jerusalem. Jerusalem above is heavenly Jerusalem. And if they want, they can get to uh, Romans 2, 28 and 29. No, we don't have to get it. Uh, 
There's a spiritual Jew and there's a physical Jew. The physical Jew, the descendants of Jacob. And you know what? They like to think that they've been pretty good about who they mix with. And we know that's not true. So even if you could prove that you are a descendant of Jacob, that don't matter anymore. That ended right here. The husband of Israel got up on the cross because Israel made a promise they didn't keep. And that's Numbers, the 30th chapter. Some people want to get into that. Numbers 30, okay? Um, okay, read, please. Verse 8. 14. Oh, the point was, you know, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I strongly suggest that you don't get hung up on the manifestation. Okay, read, please. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. Right. So the one that's given faith, is he the only one with faith? No. No. Oh, could you uh, start with uh, wisdom? Mm -hmm. the, uh, the reason a person properly applies the wisdom is because they have faith. He's not talking about the wisdom of how to uh, exterminate a race of people. He's talking about the wisdom for the glory of Yahweh. Ella. Yahweh. Okay, read please. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. Okay, you get the idea. People are given their gifts for so that they can work together and accomplish the purpose. All right? Mm -hmm. And if they misuse those gifts, they'll be left out. They may profit in that world with their body, soul, and spirit, but that isn't necessarily what their gifts are for. Any questions, please ask. And our next speaker this evening will be Dr. Chuck Weber, Charles Weber. Good evening. Um, I uh, <clears throat> had a couple things on my mind. I've been uh, uh, really enjoying class lately and uh, getting different things out of it. And uh, so I get bits and pieces here and there. Maybe I can bring a few things out, you know, and uh, <clears throat> tie it in with that scripture reading. Um, Let's, let's go there first. Um, well, I think that, you know, like, what, like Dan was saying, the, we're looking at these manifestations, and when you read the scripture reading, the first thing that comes to mind is, is money. And, and talents are money. They're, they're units of, of uh, money in, in the Bible. And in our economy, in our world, we work to get money, and then <clears throat> we try to invest it in a way to get more money back. And that's basically what the scripture is talking about. But like Dan was saying, it's not limited to the manifestation of money, you see. Now, just to give you a contrast, of, um, of the whole thing. Let's go to Mark, the uh, eighth chapter, and pick it up at um, 
30, uh, 36 around there. See if we can pick up the train of thought. <clears throat> Mark 8 and 36. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Okay, so, you know, this is the Messiah speaking in another, in another place, and he's saying, what profit of a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Now, when you compare this with the scripture reading, you talking about the parable of you know, going out and, and increasing your talents by trading or whatever these, these individuals did with those things, you see. And, uh, <clears throat> but here Yahshua is saying, what profit of a man? In other words, basically the principle they're talking about is profiting, right? You're taking the talents and you're, you're, you're doing something with them and you're making a profit. Whereas the, the um, unprofitable servant, he buried his talent. So he didn't get any profit. And he was, was um, you know, reprimanded for that, right? He was, he was judged for that, you see. And uh, <clears throat> so here Yahshua is saying, what profit of a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? So you have a different viewpoint here. And, you know, Dan has said many times in the past we've done the floor about how that the world and the way the materialism, especially in the Western countries, is, is that everybody is seeking to try and get more stuff, you know. And he commonly uses the, the phrase that, you know, it, it's like a race to, you know, he who dies with the most things wins kind of thing. But that's not what the Messiah is, is talking about, you see. And uh, um, <clears throat> so uh, when we go back and we look at um, <clears throat> uh, what happened on the day of Pentecost, there was a change, in a, as it says in here, a new heart and a new mind led by spirit law, okay? And if we contrast that with this old covenant, back here, they were given all these ordinances and uh, rules and regulations on how to eat, what to wear, uh, how to, to uh, um, <clears throat> deal with your neighbor and their various different situations and so on and so forth. And this was all physical or natural or earthly. And it did not make a man perfect, you see, as Paul writes in Hebrews in the ninth chapter, you follow? So Yahshua is um, <clears throat> bringing in a, a new way of worship, you see, that is not bound in manifestations or in physical things, you see. Now, just to give you a good example of the difference between principle and manifestation, and you know, I'm just going to do this for the sake of those people watching on the video, because I know most of you understand. But for those of you who were not, or, or those of you who were around, all of us were around before the internet, right? And before the internet, if we, if I were to use the phrase shopping cart, what would come to mind? A metal cart on wheels, right? That you would grab when you go in the grocery store and you would put things in while you're shopping, right? Now, the manifestation is it's steel, it's got wheels, it's got a handle, and some of them were made out of plastic too, you know. And, but the principle was, is that it was something to carry what you were going to buy from the store aisles or wherever you were picking them up from to the point where you would check out and pay for them, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you fast forward to the present day and you go on the internet, and you're shopping, you see, 
you will see a little picture or an icon of a shop that looks like a shopping cart. Mm -hmm. And when you click on that, you don't expect a metal shopping cart to pop up in the room next to you with all the stuff you're buying in there. Right. Because it's the principle that is being carried over. You see, we don't need the manifestation, the, the metal thing with the wheels and all that stuff because we're carrying the principle of that shopping cart over into the internet age where you are dealing with a lot of things virtually, you see. And this is true with a lot of different aspects of our lives now. We're doing a lot of things on the internet that normally we would run here and run there physically so, you see. And that's a witness to us that there has been a change in the world, you see. And that's very similar to the change between these covenants because this was natural, physical, earthly, and temporary, you see. Mm -hmm. and, the, and, the, and all these things that were set up back here were set up, you see, as a form of righteousness or a way to become reconciled with your creator or to become, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, on the good side of, of your maker, you follow, you see. So Yahweh had set this up, you see, back here, chose Abraham and his descendants, you follow, made a promise and carried them down through, you see, keeping that promise for ages and dispensations, and then at the time of Moses, bringing forth this law, you see, which was spoken down from Mount Sinai. Now back here, when that was spoken, it was first given to Moses in a vision, so you could say it was like it was all virtual in Moses' mind, right? because nothing was manifest yet. But then when Yahweh told Moses to build that tabernacle, it became manifest. But it came from principle, or something that was um, <clears throat> um, not tangible, or not physical, you see. It originated in this the spirit, you see, or it originated with Yahweh Elohim, you see. And he had all this formulated up and revealed to Moses in this vision, and then Moses comes down and builds this, this tabernacle with all these various different uh, ordinances and, and ways of worship and so on and so forth, you see. <clears throat> So now, once those things are in operation, you see, because they, um, <clears throat> in other words, they cause the, um, uh, the carnal or the earthly or the natural nature of man to come out more. And what I mean by that is that, um, before the law, and Paul talked about this in Romans 5th chapter. Let's just go over there real quick. Um, <clears throat> Romans 5, pick it up at, uh, um, or do I need to? I'm trying to think. Uh, I'm looking for before the law, sin was in the world. Is that Romans 2? Romans 5 and 12. Okay. <clears throat> Wherefore is by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Okay, so before the law, or before Yahweh, you know, 
brought this out to Moses on Mount Sinai, sin was still in the world, you see. And we know that because of the Adamic transgression and that curse that was put on Adam and all mankind, you see. That they came out of the garden, they came out of a realm or a state of being able to deal with Yahweh, who is, you know, spirit, you see. In other words, they're in that garden, and they were able to commune with Yahweh Elohim in the garden, in, in peace, in righteousness, and in joy, you see, you follow? Now, once they're deceived, you follow, we can say they become aware of the manifestations. They become, they, they get that tendency to become manifestation bound, right? Because they no longer um, <clears throat> can see clearly Yahweh Elohim, you follow, because he is the, we could say he is the principle, you see. In other words, he is the source and substance limited bounds of all things in this creation, you see. And uh, when, with him uh, being that principle and then they're dwelling in the garden with him, you see, and then they lose that heavenly state. In other words, they're, they're cast out of there because of the um, transgression. And they cannot stay there according to Yahweh's purpose so that all mankind are coming into the world physically first, you see, and then being born again by virtue of the Holy Spirit to be able to, to um, <clears throat> see past the physical, you see. So to break that down a little bit, just keep going there in Romans. Verse 14, Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned, after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Okay, so nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. So in other words, that's before the law. That's the period before the law, from Adam to Moses, right? You see? <clears throat> now go over to Romans 2 and... Uh, uh, 12. Uh, pick it up at uh, 10. Romans 2.10. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that works good, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For there is no respect of persons with Elohim. Okay, now, during the, the um, I'm sorry, <clears throat> the, during the law, you see, Yahweh chose Abraham, right? Back here, he chose Abraham. And the law, or the Ten Commandments, and all these things that, that we were talking about here, you follow, under this old covenant, they were given to the Jews and the Jews only, right? Or the descendants of Abraham. So you could say that Yahweh did respect the person back here under this old covenant, right? But Paul is writing after the death, burial, resurrection, you see, you follow? In other words, on a macroscopic veil, uh, a ma macroscopic um, view, I should say, Yahweh is, is, he's dealing with Abraham and the descendants under the law, you see? And so this law was not given to a Gentile, you see, unless they were they agreed to come in and live with the Jews, right? So, <clears throat> keep going now. Verse 12, For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law, and as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For okay, so in other words, um, uh, Dan got one scripture there where he's saying that, I think it was Ezekiel, if a man sin, then... He, he's going to pay, right? Or he shall die. And that's, Joshua picks that up in the 8th chapter of John. So the point that I wanted to make here is that <clears throat> this 
this old covenant, you see, it brings out the, the nature of, of man because they, they can't be obedient to these commandments that Yahweh have set up. And as a result, you see, they, they need a savior. You follow, you see. And as Dan has said many times in the past, I've always, especially recently, I enjoyed this one where he mentioned that, you know, the reason that God, everything you make, that God makes dies is so that you won't worship it, you see. So when people are living in this physical creation and they are <coughs> discontent in one form or another, it is natural for the human nature to seek out some sort of relief for that discontent. So then whatever it is, it's money or power or riches or, or, you know, accumulation of stuff or whatever it is, you see, people seek that. You follow? And everything, every direction you look, every place you go, whatever you get into is physical, earthly, natural, and it cannot satisfy your soul, you see. It cannot bring you back into the state of unity, you see, with Yahweh like Adam and Eve were in that garden. You follow? It just won't do it. You follow? And that, that's why Yahweh has made it that way, you see, so that we'd, we would seek something beyond this, this physical, you follow, you see. So, <clears throat> this, uh, is there anything more there? In, uh, yeah, keep going. Verse 13, for not the hearers of the law are just before Elohim, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles who have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. Okay, so he's talking about the Gentiles, the, those that didn't have the Mosaic law, so they still had a conscience that they dealt with. You follow? You see? And, and uh, you know, they, they reacted to some of the same ways as some of the commandments, you see, were, were given. You follow? But the whole point is, is that, where is that? That, um, <clears throat> that the law was given so that, that the whole world would be guilty before Yahweh? Is that in, in uh, Hebrews someplace? I know that Hebrews 10 might be a good place to go. Um, <clears throat> what do you got? Romans 3.19. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> Romans 3.19. Now we know that, that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before Elohim. Okay. So, you know, and, and, and in Hebrews 10, it talks about how that, um, <clears throat> let's just read 10, 1 and, couple, 1 and 2 there. <clears throat> this law, you see, would not make it a man perfect as pertaining to the conscience. You see, it did not change the soul. It did not clean up the inner man. Read on. <clears throat> Hebrews 10 and 1. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never, with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually, make those who come to it perfect. For them would they not have ceased to be offered? Because the worshipers, once purged, should have had no more consciousness of sin. Right. So in other words, if it did a job, then they wouldn't have to come again, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, we have people testify here about being raised in the Catholic Church and going to confession, you know, time after time and, you know, confessing their sins and stuff. And that's similar to what was happening here with the people of Israel, you see. They sinned, they brought a sacrifice. They went away and they found themselves sinning again, they brought another sacrifice. So there was, there was no change that was caused by keeping these manifestations, in other words, by dressing a certain way, by not eating pork or not eating certain, something about cloven hoofs and that kind of stuff, you know. Oh, there are a lot of details in the law, and, and there so many of them, 
But if they kept those things, like, like it says in Romans, it say if, if you, even if they did, could keep them, you see, you follow, that it, it would not make them perfect. Why? Because that curse that was put on Adam was on all mankind, you see, until Yahshua came in and took it, took it away, lifted that thing, you follow? And, uh, <clears throat> you know, you have a witness there with the... Um, uh, with, with, the, with Noah and the flood because when they come out of that, out of that ark, you see, Yahweh tells them that it would, this is like a, an example of the new creation because when, the, when the, uh, Noah, uh, when that second dispensation starts, I believe it's when Noah comes out of that ark and that's like a new creation. You see, and you read in there in Genesis that Yahweh said the curse is, the, the, the ground is no more cursed anymore. You see, you follow? So when Yahshua comes in, you see, he lifts that curse off of all mankind. You follow? So that now the, the, there's the opportunity to receive his spirit, you follow, and to be able to see into the mind of Yahweh, you see, and understand how he works and how he, how he operates, you see. Okay. Now, um, <clears throat> now that uh, um, we're, once we're, well, before we do that, let's go over to John, uh, the third chapter real quick. <clears throat> I just want to pick up Nicodemus um, because there's some good stuff in there. Just pick it up right at one. John 3 and 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This same came to Yahshua by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from Elohim, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except Elohim be with him. Okay, now the miracles or the things that Yahshua did were the power over the flesh, right? In other words, he calmed the, the, the waters, he, um, he um, <clears throat> uh, walked down water, he, he you know, healed the sick, healed the leper, which was back then was you know, a death sentence, there was no cure for it. And, and uh, so he had the power over the flesh, you see. And those were the miracles, you see. Keep going. <clears throat> Yahshua answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of Elohim. Okay, so now he's talking about being born again, you see. And, and Nicodemus doesn't understand. Keep going. <clears throat> Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Yahshua answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee. Okay, so now you see with the way Nicodemus is thinking about this, he's manifestation bound, you see, because he's thinking about the way he was born coming out of his mother's womb. And he's saying, well, how is he going to be born again? He's going to crawl back up in there and, and be born again? You see, he's all physically or manifestation bound, you see. But Yahshua was talking on a different level, you see. Read on. <clears throat> Yahshua answered, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of Elohim. Okay, so he's talking about being born of water and in the Spirit. He can't. Well, you know, if Nicodemus was really sharp, he would have said, well, look at there is a There is a water... Right, there's a show of blood, and there's a there's a water coming out before that baby comes out. So, wasn't everybody born by water and spirit? Right, you see, and physically so, yes, but the physical is trying to show forth the spiritual or something in manifestation. Right, if the manifestation is trying to show us something spiritually. You see, keep going. <clears throat> That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Mm -hmm. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, 
and whither it goeth. Okay, so now he's using the wind to explain something about spirit, right? You see, he's always going back and forth with the man, like Daniel was saying, we're all talking, communicating manifestations, but what's the principle? Read on. <clears throat> so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus ans answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Yahshua mm -hmm. answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? See, now he was a religious leader. He was educated and a leader of the, of the, of the people. Read on. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. Mm -hmm. If I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Okay, so, you know, Yahshua is saying, if you don't understand earthly things, you know, how are you going to understand heavenly things? Well, we need, you know, Romans 1, 19, 20 says that, <clears throat> let's just get that real quick, because uh, that is our theme song. That is, that is the important pivot point of your, you know, Understanding, you know, you've got to understand Romans 1 19 and 20. You follow Romans 1 19 because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them, for Yahweh has showed it unto them. So now they're using that word manifest, you see. So start again because that which may be known of Yahweh now is that manifest. which be known of Yahweh, you see, which is spirit, right? Nobody's seen. Elohim except for a few select people down through the ages and dispensations. For the most part, he's in, invisible, right? You see? And Yahweh pure spirit is invisible, you see? So, the invisible things of... You'll start over. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them, for Yahweh has shown it unto them. Okay, so now Yahweh, which can be known, is what he's saying, or it can be understood, you see, is manifest in them. Who's talking about? Israel. Israelites, the, the mankind. That's why we have this chart here, you see, because it shows how you are made, you see, according to, made in the image of Elohim by the pattern of the tabernacle, you see. You follow? And that's why you know, we can, we can break down in detail your anatomy and physiology. You know, you got three parts in your brain and that ties, tie, ties in with the three and one configuration of the Ark and the Covenant, you see, you file. And all these things are tying back and forth, you see. You got um, your lungs here and you're breathing, you see, and you're, you're, you're sounding that name of the Yahweh and it was a four main ingredients in this incense or four main ingredients in the air that you breathe, you see. So all these things are tying back and forth, you see, and that's why, you know, Paul says, 1 Corinthians 6, 19, what? No, you're not. It's your body is the temple. Why? Because he created this, you see, to be inhabited. That's um, Isaiah 45, you see. He created the earth to be inhabited. He created these bodies to be inhabited. You follow? You see? And just as back under this old covenant, Exodus 25, let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them, right? So this was made in the wilderness and was dedicated when the spirit or the cloud of Yahweh descended on the tabernacle showing that it was inhabited, you see, right? And Yahweh dwelt in that tabernacle, and wherever that cloud lifted, they had to take it apart and follow the cloud. And if the cloud got up and moved for a day, they moved for a day. If it stayed for two days, they stayed for two days. If it got up and, and you know, it moved for a month, then they kept following it for a month. Whatever, however it went, you see, they had to follow that cloud. Well, you do the same thing, you see, physically so, because you have a cloud, or whatever you think, you see, I'm going to go shopping tonight, whether it's on the internet, or you're going to get the real metal cart and go, 
you see. You're going shopping, you see. So you, you follow, you see, what your cloud says, you see. But it's all dictated by that cloud. Now, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so go back over there with Nicodemus. Pick it up where you left off. <clears throat> Uh, this is uh, John Get 3, that. I'll pick it back up in... Previous verse, pick up a couple of scripts. Yeah, I'll pick it yeah. up in the lab. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know, mm -hmm. and testify that we have seen, and you receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Okay, so he's explaining to Nicodemus the importance of understanding the principle behind something. You file, you see. Now, <clears throat> he's talking about earlier about it, it, unless a man be born of water and of the spirit, you see, you can't see the kingdom of Yahweh, you see. So you have those principles of blood, water, and spirit laid up in this tabernacle, you see. You file. And the reason that they're laid up is because the Messiah you see, goes through this death, burial, and resurrection, you see, and his blood is shed, right, you see, and there's water manifested here, and then he gives up that ghost, you see, and all of this is in fulfillment, you see, of the blood, water, spirit back here, for example, with Noah, and he read in Ezekiel about the blood being on the, the uh, well, that in that same chapter there, it talks about the responsibility of the watchman is to warn the people so that the blood is upon their head, you see. And those uh, <clears throat> that were um, uh, saved from the death of water, in other words, the earth was inundated in water, they were in the ark, you see, and it was the spirit of Yah the angel of Yahweh to close the door of the ark. So you have blood, water, spirit being manifested here. And it's Yahweh that's causing this, you see. It's Yahweh that, Yahweh Elohim that is doing this back here, you see. You got that with them coming up out of Egypt. They've been in bondage for 400 and some years. They're told, take a lamb, right? Offer it up. Blood. Put the blood on the door. They come to the Red Sea water, you see. So you got that repetition of these principles, you see, down through the ages, you see, with, uh, with um, Abraham. You see, he's told to offer up Isaac, right? You see, and, and uh, he, he, that would be, he's, he's got to shed his son's blood, right? You see, so you got blood. You got that water with the journey and the sweat and the, and the tears of, of Abraham, who's got to offer up his only beloved son, right? And he goes up there on Mount Moriah, and Yahweh says, hold it, you see? I see that you're obedient, and they offer a ram instead, instead you see? They've got blood, water, spirit with, with, with Abraham, you see? So these, you see, are, the, the talents are like blood, water, spirit. You file, and then the profit or the, the gain is for if you go in the scripture and you're reading something and you see blood, water, spirit. Like if you read uh, about Gideon, and you know, Gideon is, was told to go fight the Midianites and he was supposed to go into battle. That would be a principle of blood, right? And he wasn't sure, but he wanted a witness from Yahweh. So he says, okay, I'm going to put this fleece out on the ground, and I want the, the dew to come up on the fleece only and not on the grass. And Yahweh made it happen for him. And he said, well, let's do it again. I'm not sure. So he said, well, make, it, make the, the dew come on the ground and not on the fleece. You see? So, I mean, when I read that, I'm like, wow, that's blood, water, spirit. You know? You know, so, so you're gaining a talent. You're gaining something about Yahweh's purpose. You see, and you're, you're, you're getting another witness, you file, to fortify, you know, you know what I mean? You got more, you file. And every time you go back in there and you grab something, and Yahshua opens up something, whether it's blood, water, spirit, death, burial, resurrection, 
or, or any other things about how Yahshua will fulfill the law and the prophets, you are increasing your talents, you see. You're gaining in, in understanding, you follow. And, and uh, that is, is what, what that scripture reading is about, you follow. Because you are being profitable in the spirit, but it's only by the grace of Yahshua. It's only by the Holy Spirit, because we know that he is the one that has to give us the revelation, you see. And, you know, we come down here the first time and we just hear, we hear manifestations. We hear blood, we hear water, we hear spirit, you see. We hear death, we hear burial, we hear resurrection. But after a while, we keep coming back, you see. And if Joshua opens up something up to us, you see, then we see what it's, how it's really tying in, you follow. You see, how, how that, <clears throat> this, how that Yahweh, you see, the only two Elohim and Yahshua and Messiah. Wait, I went to get that. Um, <clears throat> um, let's see, we, Dan, Dan pulled one of those scriptures. I can't remember what it was, but um, <clears throat> um, it made me think of that. How that, um, you know, everything, everything we're trying to learn here is to, to see this unity of this Godhead, you follow? That's what everything is pointing to, you follow? And, and that we can recognize that, that Yahshua, you know, is our Savior and our only hope, you know, our only hope of, of, of glory, you know? And uh, <clears throat> so uh, with those things, I, oh, I did want to mention, I just throw out one other jot that I got from the other night, and it has to deal with manifestation. Bob was working with the, um, <clears throat> with the hemoglobin, you, most, of, most of you were here, and uh, hemo means blood, right? And he was talking about how the hemoglobin is what takes the oxygen, right? Which is the type of the spirit. And it carries that throughout the whole body, right? It has the, the iron compound or something that allows the oxygen to attach to it. And it carries that blood, or the, the blood, the hemoglobin, which is the red blood cells, takes that oxygen throughout this whole body, right? You see? Now, we all often talk about how that <clears throat> we, after Pentecost, you see, and after the consummation of these bodies at the end of this age, we're going to be back in the body of Yahshua, right? Talk about that woman clothed, in, being that woman clothed in the sun. You see, this is the woman, and she's clothed in the glory of the tabernacle, you see, which is Yahweh, an image of Yahweh Elohim, or his body, you see. So, <clears throat> so now, when you look at this word here, you see, what the bin? It's a container, right? You see? So you got globin. We're globins. You see? Remember the movie, uh, what was it? Um, <coughs> Cocoon? The guy pulled the light down like that and the light would glow out. You see? See, we've been given the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We have the understanding and to be able to glow, you see, with the truth, you follow? So we're like containers, we're globins, we're carrying the spirit around or the, or the action, you see, but you wouldn't know by looking at us, you follow, you see? Because we just look, from the manifestation, we just look like anybody else, you follow? And that's the way Yahweh works. So I thank you for the opportunity, and uh, thank you, Ashua, I had something to say. Thank you. <clears throat> And I'm going to be your next speaker. And I enjoyed both the first speakers. And I always, it's always stimulating to come to class because sometimes when you're not at class, you don't get time to sit down and think. And 
with all the craziness that goes on in your life. So I enjoy common and just sitting and listening. I do, but I did enjoy the remarks of the first couple speakers. Um, Dan was working with how the, there's a body, um, how it's all showing the Godhead, how spirit, soul, body. It's a reflection, the way that we're made, and we've got that right in the Bible. He talks about Adam being made in the image, man made in the image of Yahweh Elohim, and he is spirit, soul, and body. And that is so um, different than when I was brought up in Catholicism. Nobody ever told me that. I mean, they might have, you know, glazed over it or something, but not to the extent that we down here understand it, that Yahweh is spirit, pure spirit, source, substance, limits and bounds of everything. You just thought, you know, the whole Godhead thing is just like, um, I think both speakers are talking about the Godhead. And um, how it's this, and the other night John was on the floor and it made me think of an example somebody had given years ago, how you have stuff in your cupboards, you know, but there's nothing to eat, right? There's nothing to eat, because it's all, it's in the cupboards, but then you go and you get some flour and some sugar and some milk and some eggs and you mix it up and you make a batter. Now, there's potential there. There's potential, actually, in all your cupboards, if there's, any, you know, as long as they're not Mother Hubbard's cupboards and there's nothing there. But usually you got something in your cupboards and the example I'm using is like a cake. So all the ingredients are in your cupboard, but they're just, here and there and everywhere. Remember John had, had the cloud with the numbers all scattered. They weren't organized at all. You know, they're just up in your cupboard. And then you take them and you, you put them in an order, a cup of sugar, two cups of this, one cup of that, two eggs. You, you put them in an order and now you've got the batter for the cake. And then you take the cake and it undergoes another change with the heat. And, and it, now it's, it's uh, concrete. So you've got abstract, intermediate, like and unto the batter, concrete, but it didn't take all the sugar you had to make that one cake either. It doesn't take all the spirit to make Yahweh Elohim. See, so it's just, there's tons of stuff in here. There's tons of stuff in the cupboards, and then you just take what you need in the prescribed, in the recipe, and you make that batter up, and then this undergoes a change. But, um, this is a little bit different here, because this is, this Yahweh Elohim being spirit law, it's dictating how everything in the creation is going to be made, not just the cake. It's everything's going to be made with the same stuff, and it makes up the whole creation. So that's, there was an article um, that I saw that Jerry Geller had put out there that the scientists, some scientists think it's a little far out, but there's some scientists that believe the creation has a consciousness itself. It's, you know, rocks and everything, that there's some consciousness to it. I didn't read the whole article, didn't have time, but there, and when I, they prefaced it by, by saying, not all the scientists are going along with this. It's kind of a, you know, somebody's come up with a thing, but, you know, um, but it reminded me how Dr. Kinley talks about the animate and so-called inanimate matter of the creation. That it's all out of spirit, and this spirit has a consciousness, I guess you'd say, you know, so I can see that. Um, but it's just not the way we're used to looking at it. We're just used to thinking a rock's a rock, a chair is a chair, that stuff's dead, I'm alive, because I move, you know, and we, we put this big contrasting thing between us. But, um, there is, there is a difference though, because I really don't think this table has the Holy Spirit and this chair has the Holy Spirit. So there is a, a difference, but everything is made out of this same stuff. But in his purpose, he has purposed salvation. And that's what his purpose, that's why he came in. And that's um, when you realize how the, how much the world has missed it, what if very few of us really were let in on this, it makes you really humbles you to think you've been allowed to see this, you know, because not everybody up and down the street gets it. You know, they still look at physical water baptism and think they have to do that. 
And if you stop and think about it, it's like if John's baptism did wash away sins, then the Messiah was pretty stupid to come in and go through that crucifixion. If this did it, why would he do that? So obviously, John's baptism, water baptism didn't do it. But you see people still doing it, thinking there's salvation in physical water baptism. And I love the, the example that um, Chuck was given about that shopping cart, you know. There's the one, you know, the cranky wheels that drive you all crazy at the store. And then there's the one on the internet, you just go boop, you know, and, and this stuff's in your cart and you can and you can check out. It's such a pretty example of the old covenant and the new covenant because there's work involved in pushing that grocery cart around the store, lifting this stuff up, putting it in your cart. You do it virtually, that stuff's at your door. Mm -hmm. You didn't do any work except boop, boop, you pushed a few buttons. So I thought that was really a good example because in the new covenant, there's just, there's no work for us to do over here. This is where all the work was back here. And actually, the work was only for the Jews to be done anyway. That, uh, um, and you had, one of you had that read, how the Gentiles did by nature that which is, a, you know, contained in the law. So what law are they talking about? They're talking about spirit law. There is a spirit law, which was man's conscience. And we've um, had examples about how people's conscience drove them nuts. They you know, maybe murdered somebody 20 years ago and they go away and they get married and have kids and everything and they just, they can't stand it anymore. They have to turn themselves in. It does happen. People still, some people still have a conscience and it's just, they can't, they just can't get away from it. But there's them that don't too. You've seen them on, on uh, TV when they, you know, they've murdered a whole family and so what? Yeah, they don't, they don't care. There's no remorse. There's no regret. There's nothing. It's just, they're just seared, a seared conscience. That's just no good, you know. But there's, you know, there's people that still do have a conscience. And that's, that's a good thing, to have a conscience and to listen to it and uh, to be checking it, too. He says, you know, check your, um, examine yourself, you know, make sure that, you know, you're, that what your conscience is bothering you is about is worth being bothered about or something that needs to be taken care of. So we all have a conscience and we should be listening to that. And um, so where was I? We've got pure spirit, we got Yahweh Elohim, you got the stuff in your cupboards, you got the batter, and then you got the cake being made up. So that's the manifestation. And um, Sometimes it doesn't even take all the, you know, this could be like a cupcake, you know, did you ever do cupcakes with the batter? You're doing it, so it doesn't, doesn't take all of the batter to make a cupcake either. So it's not, doesn't take all of Yahweh Elohim, although this is the fullness. Everything that is in Yahshua Messiah when he's in the flesh, those same attributes are in Yahweh Elohim. Those same attributes come from the source of Yahweh. So this is spirit as, um, as Yahweh Elohim has explained it to us and we understand it. And it's not the way that the Catholic Church teaches it as a trinity. It's, you know, that's so, once you see the unity of the Godhead, you just, it just is everywhere, it's everywhere. It just, there's no, um, you know, you don't take the stuff out of your cupboard and throw it over there and then take something else and mix it up and then throw something else in the oven and expect to come out with what your recipe, you know, you're making a German chocolate cake. You know, you have to use what, the, what that recipe calls for in order to end up with a German chocolate cake. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't be messing with it. It's all got to be the same, the same batter, it's the same ingredients. It doesn't, the ingredients don't change, they undergo a change because here they're just scattered everywhere. Here they're mixed together in a particular manner, in order, organized, and then here they go through a, a, a different change to bring them to what they're supposed to, what is supposed to be the end result, which was declared from the recipe and is declared from the beginning. You read a German chocolate cake, that's what you should end up with. But when you're, you get the recipe, it's not, it's not the cake. You know, it's kind of like, as Chuck's talking about. So here you do, he does come into the physical, the flesh, for a purpose of salvation. And that salvation has been documented by the Law and the Prophets. He's got his witnesses. And, when, you know, you go to court, it's good to have witnesses standing up for you. 
And he certainly has provided himself his witnesses, just like with Abraham. He goes, oh, he'll provide himself a lamb. Well, yeah, he did. He provided himself as the lamb. And he also provides the witnesses for us so that we can understand the lamb and what, how he brought in such a change and that we can walk in confidence knowing that it's, it's okay not to participate actually it's not good at all once you've understood it to be participating in it and partaking of this in any you know manner that you really think there's something to it i know you know i've seen people you know receive communion and i now know that they you know they're in class just did it see there's nothing to it no there's no here or there you know it's not the issue the issue is thinking that oh i better just go and be water baptized just in case they're wrong down there at class. I better go get water baptized. But you stand in total confidence knowing that this spirit is actually you're a partaker of the Holy Spirit. And you know that because he's revealed this stuff to you because Yahweh is the only one that can explain Yahweh. There's just, there's no getting around it. And what is that, where is that quote? And he to whosoever son will reveal him. I don't know where. Matthew. Matthew. Um, no one knows the Father save the Son, no one no, knows the Son save the Father, and he to him the yeah. Matthew. Matthew 11 or Matthew 7? Matthew 11 and 27. All things are delivered unto me by my Father, and no man knows the Son but the Father. See, no man knows the Son but the Father, okay? Neither knows any man the Father, father save, save the, the Son. son. And he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. So this is, this is, you know, did you know anything about Yahweh Elohim before you came down here? No. I didn't, you know. And I kind of used to read the Bible and kind of, you know, I went to church and I had no clue. This is almost like the missing link, really, right here. Yahweh Elohim, the Word or Son. It was so new to me when I came down here. So it's a whole different way of thinking about things. And then to realize that when you came down here, and people told me about Yahshua, and they showed me the Law and the Prophets, how it proves out that He's the Savior, that He was the Lamb, that He fulfilled the Law and the Prophets, and, and it builds up your confidence in Him. And then you realize that what He's doing is revealing this to you. He's revealed His Father to you, Yahweh Elohim. And then every time I do the moderation, this is in my mind, um, no, I'm going to forget it, right? Uh, a vision and revelation. Divine vision and by... Divine vision is understood in divine... And understood by divine revelation, yeah. So there's people that c come down and have a vision, but they don't get the divine vision, and then they don't get the revelation. Now, Dr. Kinley said he had it painted out. This is a divine vision. So it's here... But could you come in here, sit down by yourself and study these and get what you've had explained to you? No. So that to me is just showing you, really is the Holy Spirit doing the explanation. It's really, the, it's Him explaining Himself to us so that we get it. And, it, and um, so, so it's, He's revealing this. And when I came down here, I used to love listening about Yahshua and have him draw the, the you know, blood, water, spirit, 40, blood, water, spirit, 40, blood, water, spirit, 40, pointing to Yahshua, how he died, he buried, he resurrected for 40, and, and he ascends on the cloud like, like uh, the priest ascended on the cloud on the Day of Atonement. And after a while, I realized that all this stuff is really coming from here. It's really, it's the same spirit. It's, this is spirit law. And he's obviously spirit law. I don't know how to say this. You're talking about words. Your thoughts are crucified because you have to use words kind of thing. It's, words are a crucifixion of thought. Words are a crucifixion of thought because there's things that um, we try to explain to each other and you just have to um, do the best you can with the words that you have. I don't know how else to explain it. And so... Before I came to class, I had no idea about Yahweh Elohim and what an important part of the Godhead. I didn't even know, you know, I learned Trinity. God the Father, God the 
So I'm God the Holy Spirit. No, no relationship at all. Now understanding that this is the same, this is the same as this. It's just, you know, doesn't take all that to make this, doesn't take all this to make this. That he did, he came into the flesh for a purpose. And the witness I always think of is like the water cycle. You've got evaporation, condensation, and precipitation. What if there was only evaporation and condensation and there was no precipitation? You'd die. Physically speaking, if it never rained or snowed, we never got any of that moisture falling out of the sky and hitting the earth to bring forth that seed and bud and all that, like in Isaiah 61, we'd all die. So that's, that's how important that rain is. That's how important it is that he had to come into the flesh, had to come down to the earth to bring forth and bud and so that, that those talents could be manifest. That's the, that's the fruition in this creation is that his spirit being poured out and that that spirit in us being manifest. And there's even a quote that, um, it's in Romans, something about where the righteousness of Yahweh and Yahshua, something to that effect. No, that we are the righteousness of Yahweh in Yahshua, something like that it goes, that we're the righteousness. I mean, we understand it's the spirit in us, it's really what is righteous. And over in um, Romans 5, it talks about righteousness being a gift, the gift of righteousness. It's in Romans 5, I know that's there. Um, and when it's a gift, something that's it's just given to you, a gift, right? It's just given to you. So that gift of righteousness, he gives us the gift, and then he calls us the righteousness of Yahweh and Yahshua. I think that's how it reads. And if you can't find it, that's... It talks about um, a gift of grace. So is the offense. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many are dead, much more the grace of Elohim and the gift by grace which is by one man, Yahshua the Messiah, hath abounded unto many. I think it's down farther. And not as it was by one, that sin, so, it, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more, they who received abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Gift of righteousness. We received the gift of righteousness. See, that's something we received, is the gift of righteousness. And it comes with having the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's one of the talents, if you will, that comes with that, having the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. is righteousness. And then someplace else it does talk about how we are the righteousness of Yahweh and Yahshua, or of Yahshua and Yahweh. I think it's of Yahweh and Yahweh. Anyway, I'll try to find that for you, but I just thought that was, because it's the gift of righteousness. It's the, it's the same gift. It's the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that we all are partakers of that same spirit. And yet, like um, Chuck was talking, I think it is, the diversity of gifts. It's not like a, we're a bunch of robots. We all walk the same and talk the same. It's not like that at all. Just like the body. How many, you know, three trillion billion cells or whatever. And you've got, you know, liver cells. You've got kidney cells that are different from heart cells that are different from blood cells that are different from skin cells that are different from, you know, the variety of the cells in the body is just amazing. And they all have their little jobs to do. But a lot of them don't look like each other. They're striated muscle. They're smooth muscle. There's cardiac tissue. They all, they all look different. Even all the kinds of muscles look different. So, and they all act different because they all have different jobs to do. So it's, you know, you, the heart muscle can't look at the lung and go, you should be doing what I'm doing. I'm doing the best job over here and I don't see you doing what I'm doing. Why aren't you doing what I'm doing? I'm doing good. I don't know what you're doing. It's not like that. Everybody's doing fine. <laughs> the body's working together fine, especially the body of Yahshua. You don't have to worry about that. The body of Yahshua, there's no problem there. It's all smooth sailing. It all works together. Um, so um, I see a difference because the Holy Spirit, see in John it talks about how um, um, John 1, this stupid thing's been following me all night. John 1, 
um, the light that lighteth every man. Mm -hmm. And that's the spirit of breath or the spirit of life. And he breathed the spirit of life into Adam. And Adam became a living soul. And then Adam and Eve had children. And, you know, they all breathed the, the breath of life. Doesn't mean the Holy Spirit was into every single one of them. Now, they all were under spirit law. They're all operating under spirit law, but not necessarily having, being partakers of the Holy Spirit. Now, we know under the Old Covenant that, you know, it came and it went, if you will. There were certain ones that were motivated to do Moses. was a goodly child, you know. He was, and John, I think, talks about it. talks about a couple of them being born with the Holy Spirit. But otherwise, there's, you know, prophets that prophesied for a time. And when it was their time to prophesy, they prophesied. And then they go quiet. It's like a little flame. You turn up the flame on the stove, then you turn it back down again, you know? That Yahweh used them to, to move forward his purpose. But it wasn't until the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost that it became a permanent thing with people. It was temporary in this old covenant. But then again, look, when he raised from the dead here, the sons that slept in the dust of the earth, they raised and, and followed him into Jerusalem to let you know that there were those that were, had salvation back here when it was not given, given permanently, but yet showed us that they'll also inherit the kingdom when at the final, final bell, they'll also be inheriting the, the same, same kingdom as us. But I do see a difference between Everyone that's in the earth plane and those that receive the Holy Spirit or the spirit of law of life in Yahshua the Messiah. I think that's, and I think it's only one place in the Bible. It's in Romans, is it, um, I'm so bad, I just looked it up to Romans 8 and 2, something like that. Romans 8 and 2. You can pick it up at 1 if you want. And 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in the Messiah, Yahshua. See, isn't that pretty? No condemnation. And that's what we, you know, I remember being in church and it's like, oh, I didn't go to confession. I can't go receive communion. And I did this and I did that. And I should have been at this mass and I missed that. And it's just a bunch of guilty, guilty stuff. And when I stopped and sat down in this class and I started thinking about that stuff, I thought, huh. I don't see, find any place in the Bible where it talks about not eating meat on Fridays. Why was I doing that? Somebody made that up. And how come, you know, those priests said you're not supposed to marry? And then I look in here and I find out that, that Peter, supposedly the first pope, was um, married. He was married. And they're saying not getting married. So it's down here that I started to get my eyes opened to stuff, actually stuff that I never thought of before. Why would I th even bother to think about it until you're trying to investigate something about spirit and reality, what's really going on in your Bible, and you find out that your Bible really is explaining about the Godhead and, and salvation and how it occurs and how you can become a partaker of the Holy Spirit. It's just, you just didn't think in those terms before. So there's therefore now no condemnation to them because we're not trying to keep any law. We're not trying to keep that law. It's just like the, um, you, an animal can't sin. It's under spirit law, right? It can't go against its nature. Now, we're of a, Yahweh has made us uh, the highest uh, of the creation because we're a reflection of him. So he's given us this uh, a brain. This, we're smarter than dogs. You know, sometimes I know there's animals that can see better than us and they can hear better than us, but he's given us the highest intelligence of creatures in this creation because we're reflecting him. And just like Adam was a king in this garden here, he's made us kings in this creation and given us the Holy Spirit so that we, we see things as they really are. And we're not, um, you know, you're talking about... Uh, you were talking about how people have to buy stuff all the time to make themselves happy and something new all the time. And, you know, no problem with anybody having anything new. But that's what drives you every single day. Then you might be a hoarder. <laughs> but, you know, um, spiritually speaking, we're not lacking at all. We are kings. We, are, we rule. He's made us to rule because he's given us of 
his spirit. So that makes us rule in this creation that there's, we're, we're not lacking. He's not leaving us short on anything. There's, if you have questions, and there's answers. If you don't know it, you can ask around. There's people that will be happy to get into discussions with you and try to help you f see, you know, what's what. Um, not debates, not into debating. That's no. If you, you know, not going to debate, but if you really and honestly have a question, you seriously want to know something about your Creator, there's a place to go. So there's therefore now no condemnation to them who. To them who, walk, who are in the Messiah Yahshua. In the Messiah Yahshua. Now we know that's not, we're not saying that physically, we're not inside another man. But obviously, we're in him in the, in the spirit, a spiritual body. We make up his body. Right. Okay, go ahead. Walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That's not what drives us is the flesh. We're not trying to be all powerful and all, all kinds of money and the best car and the best house on the street and the best this and the best that. That's not what drives us. What drives us is wanting to know as much as we can because... You, what you were talking about, Chuck, how you, you go and you read something, blood, water, spirit, and you get another witness, it just, it just builds you, it strengthens you and builds you up, and it, and it cements you, makes you even more solid, you know, because he said, you're going to need it. You're going to need it. And you see that some things that are being taught out there, and they're trying to rock your foundation, you know, forget about the law, the pro you don't need them anymore. It's, you know, you don't need to read those transcripts and and stuff like that. Just listen to this one and that one. That's all you got to do. It's like, not what my book says. <laughs> my book says stay in the book. And Dr. Kinley said stay in the book. And get your witnesses from Law and the Prophets and stay there. You know, never mind wandering. So there's no condemnation done to them that are in Yahshua the Messiah. Walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So we're walking after the Spirit. We want to know as much as we can. And we're listening to that Holy Spirit within us and walking according to that. And you just can't... You're, when your nature has been changed, there's no... You can't change your nature. You just can't do that. It's been done for you. He's changed your nature. Go ahead. For the law of the Spirit of life in the Messiah Yahshua hath made me free from the law of sin and death. And that's what's done it. See, this law, knowing this Holy Spirit, being a partaker of this Holy Spirit, it's made us free from that law of sin and death back here. And now we look out and we, we look around and we see how many people are still in bondage to this law of Mosaic law, which is the law of sin and death, which is death if you don't keep the whole law and we realize there's been um, a great gulf fixed there's a great gulf so it's very seldom that you ever have anybody that has an ear to hear what you have to say I don't know maybe you're lucky maybe you get to talk to people all the time about this it's very seldom I usually get shut down boop, pretty much right away <laughs> and that's okay you know I can't you know I can put the food there, and if you're not gonna, you know, you can take lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Mm -hmm. What what can you do? But that's why I so enjoy coming down here and being able to listen and to hear and to talk to other people with the same understanding, and we're all helping to sharpen up each other's understanding too. I think, you know, when we do question or ask questions or whatever, that's how we sharpen it up. So, second verse again there. For the law of the Spirit of life in the Messiah Yahshua hath made me free from the law of sin and death. So we realize that being partakers of the Holy Spirit, the law, Spirit of life in Yahshua Messiah has made us free from this law. Now, that law, Spirit of life, is covered under Spirit law, but not everyone's a partaker of the Holy Spirit. So there, you know, there's, it's been said that from John there, where the light that lighteth every man means everybody has the Holy Spirit. It's just not so. It's not true. There's a difference between being a partaker of the Holy Spirit and just following spirit law. And spirit law, with a carnal mind, you see what happens out in that world. That poor police woman sitting in her car. Guy just came up and flew her away. She was just sitting in her car. She wasn't bothering anybody. 
So there was a big funeral down in New York City for that woman police officer. Then you've got one up there. It was a um, domestic dispute. And he just went on a call for domestic dispute. And he's not with us anymore. I mean, there's people that are just, they're carnal minds, and that's all they know. And they just take, you know, gun, whatever, drugs, like you were saying, drugs, gun, power, whatever it is, trying to get through this, this creation because they have no idea that this is even available. Although, even in our aims, it talks, what is the, um, the common salvation? Is it the ninth aim, eighth or ninth aim? I mean, aim eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. So this is a common salvation. It's not like it's so, it's, it is rare and it is precious, but we do everything we can to make it common. We do, do everything, you know, we advertise, we have free lectures, we put it up on YouTube, do whatever you can. This is a common salvation. It's not, you know, it's not like exclusive there's no one you can't be excluded because you you don't have a good job or you're not the right color or there's there's we cannot exclude anybody so to me that makes this a common salvation there's no doesn't matter male female short tall rich poor black white red yellow there's no lines like that none at all so that makes it a common salvation so this is a common salvation which was once delivered unto sons or children of Yahweh well he's delivered that common salvation to us and here we are recipients of that common salvation and you know it's just um, what can you say but holy 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 like you know they talk about the angels uh, in the next creation, they're just going to be praising Yahshua. It's like, what else are you going to do? And that's pretty much all that, uh, to me, the purpose of this florist is to praise him and to share with people the things that he has shown us. Because if Yahweh was, no, how does Dr. Kimley put it? Nobody can tell you anything about Yahweh but Yahweh himself. Something to that that's probably not perfect but something like that so that makes you realize where this is from you know yeah dr kinley had these drawn out but he said that nobody knows nothing about yahweh except yahweh himself so that gives you a clue to where this came from yeah he had it painted and yes he had a divine vision and revelation and yeah he stood he stood behind it and he proved it to us and so we're totally convinced that, yes, Yahweh does exist. Yes, there is a plan of salvation. Yes, there's salvation of souls. Yeah, it's effective this night. It's effective. It hasn't gone out of style. It's not outdated. That it can be proven that the law and the prophets and this tabernacle pattern, which is right on this chart. Um, yeah, well, well, yeah. Oh, here it is. Elohim. See, we talk about Yahweh Elohim, the word or the sun is the archetype or original pattern of the universe. So there's the original pattern that everything else is patterned after. So we know that man is made in the image of Elohim by the pattern of the tabernacle, just like everything else is. Because when you take it down to the atom, you got the nucleolus, the nucleus, and the cell body. One, two, three, boom. That's all the atoms. Atoms are what everything's made out of, whether they're animate, or so-called inanimate. They're all made out of atoms. So when you see that, you see that there's nothing that escapes the pattern. And that's, right, that's been right in our moderation from get-go, that there's nothing that escapes that pattern. So you've got atoms, you've got cells, you've got, there's nothing that doesn't go by this pattern because everything in this creation is put together to to show us Yahweh Elohim and his operation in the spirit. And that's what we're coming into a knowledge of, the operation of the, Holy, of the spirit, how it works in this creation, how it's worked in, in, the, uh, in past times and in the Law and the Prophets, and then how it's still working this night. It's working in people. It's, in, it's right in us. Um, there was something else I was just thinking about. I don't know. He was, that was um, nice what he did with the hemoglobin, too, how we carry that spirit. That those, those red blood cells do carry the, um, 
carry the oxygen to every single part of the body and it's reminds me of how in Matthew he talks about and this uh, shall be preached in the whole world and then shall the end come yes. and that's what we're pretty much <coughs> betting on that this create this gotta be going it's got to be going out because um, the the signs are out there that uh, and I think most people are just about ready for it just about tired of the flesh because once you come into the knowledge of the spirit and you see what's waiting for you it's like let's go you know what are we hanging around here for maybe for someone else to come in or whatever so we're here for the duration but that's where we're going to stay is in the body of Yashua you're never going to escape that always going to be there so um, I think with that I know there's a few minutes left I'm going to sit down we'll see thank you Somebody else up for five? No? Alright. Okay, I guess we're going to call it. There's only five minutes left, so if you all please stand for the doxology. And now unto Yahshua, who alone is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his grace with exceeding joy. To the only wise Yahshua, our Savior, belongs glory and majesty, dominion, power, both now and for all times, let's all say, Hallelujah. Amen.